Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bag. Let me get this out of the way so you can see. It's just one of those um, like produce bags that you just carry with you. See, it's just very light and airy. And you just kind of fit a whole bunch of stuff down in there. And it's got a shoulder strap with it. Now the loom I'm using to make this is the half inch gauge um, 55 peg small adult or youth large loom from Cindy Woodcrafts. Now what you're going to do first is all of this is done on one piece. Um, I start with the strap and then we move down the body and then do the cast off. So what you're going to want to do is where your black peg is, you're going to want to count 12 each way, and you're going to mark four pegs. This is where we're going to do our handle at. It's going to start on one side, and then we'll connect it to the other side, and then just keep going. So how we're going to do this is I'm actually, the whole handle I'm going to do in a, just a garter stitch. So leave some yarn down. We'll weave that in later doesn't matter which side you start on you e-wrap those four pegs then go back and wrap them again and you're going to pull the bottom over the top oh that one will have to tighten up there you go So that is your cast on for the handle. So make sure this strap is out of the way. Now whichever way you are comfortable working, you go back and purl. I'll just show you a few, few rows. Purl all the way back. If you need more help with how to do the e-wrap or purl stitch, there are individual videos for those. Then we're going to, and you're always going to be doing the same direction. So this way right here is always going to be e-wrap for this part of the pattern. And then your way back is always going to be a purl stitch. There you go, and you can see it's already starting to come out. It's not going to be real wide, but you don't need it to be wide. If you want a wider strap, just go out one on each side. So instead of four, you'd be doing six. You go over to this side and do six as well, or however many you want. Um, but doing four, you get a strap. We'll see how wide that is with just four. Okay, so the strap is roughly an inch wide with just doing four straps. So if you wanted four pegs, if you wanted it two inches wide, you do like eight pegs. Um, but what you wanna do is you just keep doing this pattern, your E-wrap and then purl, just one row E-wrap, your other row purl stitch until your strap is about 20 inches long. All right, once you have the strap, as long as you want, which mine is right at you know 20 inches. You're gonna take. I'm gonna look at this end. Now you gotta be careful because if you pull on this one right here, or okay, there we go. If you pull on this one back here, it'll pull this out. So you want to kind of find four different loops on there. You can go from side to side, however you need to, because we're gonna be putting these. On the loom over here, on the side over here, and you got to make sure this is straight because if it's twisted, it's going to be twisted in the bag when it's done. So you just find the loops, which I took two from one side, two from another side. And when you're making your strap, uh, do keep in mind that it will stretch some. 
So that's why I did mine 20 inches and it'll stretch a good bit after that. So you push those down. And when you're done with the bag, this will just, this right here will just weave in. Now at this point, I'm just going to do an E-wrap cast on. So we start over here to where it's at. So we E-wrap all the way around. All right, once you've E-wrap back to your first peg, you're actually going to take and push the strings, the loops from the strap back up to the top because we're just going to treat all this as one. And for our brim, we are going to do 10 rows of rib stitch, just the E-wrap to purl to, E-wrap to, purl to, all the way around. It's a Once your 10 rows of rib stitch are done, it should look something like this. You'll have strings coming off this side where you connected the handle. And then here's your handle is starting to come down. Uh, now the rib stitch, I'm going to go over which pegs are which again just so it's a double rib so you e-wrap two purl two e-wrap two purl two e-wrap two purl two you do that all the way around but when you get back there's gonna be an extra peg so it's gonna be like okay this is where you start e-wrap purl e-wrap purl when you get all the way back you're gonna have these two are going to be e-wrap so you're going to purl that last one but you can see a single rib right there that'll keep it from being like a big flat spot and it's really not going to be noticeable if you're doing this on a loom with even pe number of pegs and it won't be a problem but here is how the ribbing is coming out now from here let me get the bag out and show you we're doing just a single drop stitch and going from one drop stitch right into the next, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I did eight consecutive drop stitches, and then I went back into the rib pattern for the bottom of the bag. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview of how to do the drop stitch, because um, I've got videos to show you how to do this if you need more help with it. So you're just gonna wrap your peg you're going to wrap it again, wrap the next. Wrap and wrap. You wrap two pegs at a time and you e-wrap, you take the bottom the bottom over the top on the second peg so that the first peg you wrap is left with two strands of yarn on it and you do that all the way around until you get back to that first one. And back at our last peg, it'll only have one, but we'll wrap it before we do our next row. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go around the loom and pull off that second loop all the way around the loom. Once all the pegs just have one, you're gonna notice these loops are like that, but you can go ahead and pull on them so that they don't pop off of the loom. And that is what they're gonna look like. You can see them all the way around. Now the second part of doing this drop stitch is um, you wanna lock all those in place. So we're gonna do one row of purl stitch. But what we do is remember this one was only wrapped once so you just wrap around that and then sorry, so you just wrap once around that and now you start with your purl stitch now these stitches on the loom right now are going to be loose so you purl all the way around back to that first peg. Okay, when you get back to that first peg that you'd wrapped, it's going to have two on it. Go ahead and take that second one off. And do a purl stitch. That way it'll have a drop stitch see, as well. 
And there you go, that is your first set that counts as one set. So you pull all that down and you just go right into your second set of drop stitch. Now each set's going to be the same. You're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna do a row. Oops. Then you'll do a row of purl stitches and then you'll go back into another set. And you're going to do that until, either do it until you have at least, um, do it for like eight sets or until it's as long as you want. Cause this is how long eight sets will make. And then we're going to do a rib stitch and then we'll do our cast off. So, purl two, e-wrap two. And do this all the way around till you get back to your first peg. And remember, this is an odd number of pegs. So you'll come back around and it'll be like purl two and there's gonna be one empty one. And then you're gonna be back at your original purl two. Just e-wrap that original one. And this is what it's gonna do is you're gonna have a spot that's a little closer together. That's perfectly fine. So you just do that all the way around and do 15 rows of this pattern. All right, after the 15 rows of rib stitch, this is what your bag is going to look like. You got your handle, the bag. Uh, now I went ahead and done the last part, which is 15 more rows of rib stitch, but I reversed the pattern. You can see it creates a ridge where you'll flip your bag inside out when it's done. And that's gonna create a ridge for the bottom of the bag. So it's gonna to wanna to naturally fold right there to create the bottom part of the bag. Now a couple tips I'm going to give you is um, your last two rows if you're using two strands of yarn, just do one strand. That way the bind off will be smoother. And you wanna completely reverse the pattern. So, and what I mean by that is, let's say this way you purl two, e-wrap two, purl two, e-wrap two, all the way around for 15 rows. Then you would e-wrap two, purl two, e-wrap two, all the way around for 15 rows. It's completely opposite. To do the cast off, I'm going to be using, um, I'm not sure like the official name, I just call it the flat top cast off. It's really, really good cast off for rib stitches. And what we do is you're going to actually first take your working yarn and wrap around the loom three times and then cut just so you have enough yarn to do this cast off. All right. All right, so what you do is you pull the yarn through two pegs. You can see how that looked from one and two. Put it behind two pegs. Then you're going to pull it through the next two. There's one. And here's two. Then you're gonna put the yarn behind two pegs. You're going to repeat this all the way around till you get back to your okay. starting. This is what's going to look like. You have yarn going through two and behind two all the way around. Now, since this is an odd number of pegs on this loom, here's where your stop stop point is. And here is your first one. So you got one empty one. I'm actually just going behind all three of those. We'll pick this one up as our very last one. And then you're going to do the exact same thing but this time you're going to be picking up all the pegs that you didn't pick up the first time. So you're going through two and behind two and those two are already gotten. And you're going to do this all the way around till every single peg on the loom now, is picked up. Once every single peg on the loom is picked up, you take every peg, you take all the yarn off the loom now. We're gonna do this all the way around until every single one is off the loom. Once off the loom, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look a little weird right now. But right now, you're gonna have a string here where your last couple rows were done with just one strand. 
and then let me find here's the main string this is probably one of the most important parts of this pattern you have to be very careful here and not pull too tight let me start pulling this string and you're gonna see what's going on what you've just done is you've went around twice so there are two rows of yarn going so what I do is I just put my fingers in there and like kind of pull around my fingers and then stretch it out so that it gets that bottom row too or else if you just pull it real tight I'll just show you if you pull it real tight like this and then flip it inside out you'll end up with like these loops like this when your bag is done and you do not want that so you gotta be very careful you don't you need to pull it tight but you don't want to pull it too tight so that you break the yarn so sometimes it takes a moment you just keep doing that until it gets to where it's not really pulling any extra see I don't have any loops on this side so you want to flip around and I don't have any loops on that side so at this point you close it off you still want to pull some more but you want to be careful not to break the string especially if you're using the same string I did which is um, a washcloth yarn I chose it just because it's typically it's very durable and you can just throw it in the washer throw it in the dryer everything you're gonna be fine with it but it's cotton so for this part right here that could break so you do want to be very delicate with that now at this point the way it went on the loom just because of the where the rib pattern changes it's going to want to lay flat that way like this instead of this way but it's up to you you can kind of stretch it out and get it to lay like that Ooh, look how that spiraled that's really cool anyway you can kind of force it to lay like that if you want I prefer to just flip it inside out and do it that way I just prefer the way it looks but at this point you're gonna to want to pull your yarn through which we don't need all that yarn because you're gonna have a big long piece of yarn now since from that cast off you just need a little part um, make sure you got it as tight as you can without breaking the yarn and then just do like a little slip knot and tie that in see I pulled it just a little too tight and it broke except for the tinsel through it but I've already had that knot tied which was good now we gotta find other strings now this I've already it's kind of weaved through a bit but you don't want it weaved right there on the edge of the handle I'm actually going to bring it down into the rib stitch oh no we don't want it coming down here I'm gonna bring it down in through the rib stitch on the inside what I'm gonna use is the inside of the bag and you just kind of weave it through some because it's already weaved in really good at the handle you just don't want that end hanging out at the top of the handle so I'm just gonna weave it down and then we'll just cut the strings there's no need to tie it or anything because that's going to be hooked in there pretty good this is just finishing up and getting everything to look nice and neat and then you stretch that and that will blend in pretty much and you really won't notice it at all now to flip it because there's one more right here it is which what you want to do when you're weaving in your ends you want to take and pull all of the strings to the inside of the bag to weave them in that way you don't have any ends hanging out of the outside of the bag I got part of it pulled in here and this one doesn't need tied off either you just weave it through a few and then you can just cut it All right now we could flip this and see our finished product 
So here is the bottom of the bag. It's going to want to sit flat. And then we got the handle. Let me make... Bring up some. There we go. Got the bottom, which is going to sit flat. This is a little tight right now, but once you put stuff in it, this will fill out. Now, I want to show you uh, the difference because there was something I did different with the first bag I made. See how like loose and floppy this first one is? This first one was done with just one strand of yarn. It's a lot looser and it's really, really floppy. This one's a little stiffer and it's going to hold its shape a little bit better. So it's really up to you. Now, if you're wanting to use this as a produce bag that you can just wad up into a little tiny ball and throw into your purse or your bag, whatever, you might want to go more this route. Now, if you want to use it more like a little beach bag to where you can throw your sandals and sunglasses and sunscreen, maybe throw a towel in there, you want to go maybe with the double strands. That's what I would suggest. Now, if you are wanting to do this as a bag, like to carry along a carry along, carry along bag at the beach, I suggest doing not eight sets of the drop stitch, but more like 15, maybe 20. It's going to make it a lot longer, and then you'll be able to fit a big, nice beach bag in it, a beach, uh, beach towel in it, sorry. So there we go. Bag is all done. I really hope you enjoyed this pattern. Any comments or questions, please leave in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to